Hello everyone, this is another episode of Let's Talk Sports with Tim McCain. I'm here with James Dickey. What's going on? I first want to thank Chris Lepore, uh, basketball of, of operations at UNCG. He uh, allowed me to interview you, and I really appreciate it. He actually was my first interview. So shout out to Chris Laporte. Shout Thank out to you Chris very much. I'm SCL. Yes, sir. How you doing today, James? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I feel good. That's good, man. That's good. So my first question to you is, when did you first start playing basketball, and when did you know you could play at an elite level? Uh, I started playing when I was about five, like team sports-wise. I started playing about five years old. I got in there pretty early. Uh, my mom would just throw me in rec leagues. It's just... It wasn't just basketball, all the different types of sports, but um, it was about five years old. Uh, but I would like to consider myself a late bloomer um, because I, I had so many different growth spurts and knee pains and my feet couldn't just catch up to my body. I was always so clumsy growing up. Mm -hmm. and I don't really feel like I, I truly believe I can play at elite level until about junior year of high school, mm -hmm. senior year of high school. Wow. And um, yeah, it's, it's really late, but Hey man, sometimes it takes time to develop. It does. For real, man. So what was that like, you know, st starting out at five years old playing basketball? Do you remember some of those? What's the earliest you can remember playing? I was just having fun. That's all it really was. I was just, I'm just having, having fun with my friends. That's really all I really remember about it. That's amazing. Yeah. So what was it like playing under Coach Woods and Word of God? Uh, very free, um, fast. Um, relaxed type of atmosphere. Um, he really allowed us to just become the players that we are. Um, he gave us some little, some little soft instructions, but he, he really allowed us to just use our IQ. And um, we, we all, the, I was fortunate enough to that, that senior team that I was with on my senior year, uh, we all grew up together. So he just kind of just let us just form that bond on the court and just play. It's incredible. Yeah, man. it was it was a blessing. So when you were at Word of God and you were killing it, what were some of the schools that recruited you, and what ultimately led you to sign with UNCG? Um, like I said, I was a late bloomer, um, so I didn't really have many offers. I had a lot of offers uh, from like quote unquote low major schools. Um, I really can't remember too many. Campbell, I know they offered oh, me. Wow. That was my first offer. Campbell, Stetson, VMI. Interesting. The military school. Yeah, the, the military. They're, they're actually in our conference now. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that was it. Interesting. Yeah. So what led you to, to sign with UNCG? Yeah, with the whole UNCG thing. So me and my best friend, Demetrius. Who is a, uh, Demetrius just, Troy. Yeah, just graduated here. Um, my best friend, I knew him since about, we were like eight years old. Um, and we played AAU together all the way up to high school and we were like, man, let's just keep this going, let's, let's go to college. So like, we were just like, all right, let's just see what type of offers that like both schools will offer us and like line them up. And um, so VMI offered us together and UNCG. So we instantly just like cut out all other schools <laughs> and was just like, all right, let's, let's just talk about the, oh, Campbell did also. Okay. So um, UNCG by far was the, a way better situation than other sure. two schools, um, from the coaches to what they had to offer academically, and it just it just it fit our play style and it just worked. And obviously, you look at it four That's years right. later, and we have these magnificent careers. That's so, right, championship right here. You know, so amazing, amazing. So, what about your game has developed since you've come at UNCG, and what would you like to add to your arsenal of skills? Um, I think the f the most important thing is. I felt like Coach Miller allowed me to fall in love with basketball. Um, I started be, becoming around some really smart basketball minds on a daily basis, and I really started to understand how the way basketball is supposed to be played. And I just developed this new type of love for the game, and I think that's where that passion that you see me play with, that's where it comes from. I, it, that's kind of a new thing for me, honestly. You may not, see, you may, you may not have noticed it. No, yeah. I wouldn't have, because you always play with passion when yeah. I saw you play. That's that, amazing. That comes from Coach Miller. That's amazing, man. <laughs> yeah. So, what were you thinking when you won the, your so-called Defensive Player of the Year award? Um, I literally had zero clue um, that 
I was even a contender for it. Um, Interesting. And that's just something that has to do with being at UNCG. Uh, they do a great job of giving us confidence, but also humbling us and just uh, make, letting us all know that like you shouldn't you shouldn't think that anything's gonna be given to you. Mm. And so I was just that, that wasn't even my mindset like what type of personal awards I was gonna win. I was just wanted to win this guy right here. Yes, so when, when I when I won, I was really shocked. Um, but at the same time, really proud of myself that I was able to do something this cool coming from where I came from. So it's amazing, man. Something yeah. you could tell your kids, hey, look, exactly. this is what I want. Exactly. Is, you know what I'm saying? Get, hopefully, I'll get one more. Oh man, yes, you're gonna get one, man. I <laughs> believe so. Get one more. So when it comes to post players, do you still believe you can have a post, a dominant post player in today's game, or do you feel like a forward like yourself right. has to develop more of an outside shot to maintain success? Well, I mean, I wouldn't really consider myself a post player, um, but to answer your first question, yes, I think I think a dominant post player is still uh, relevant in today's game. You have a Joel Embiid; he's extremely dominant. Um, so yeah, I think that even though they're not as you don't see him as much, uh, a dominant post player is still um, very valuable in today's game. Um, but someone like myself. I wouldn't consider myself a post player. I just think I'm a basketball player. I don't. Mm. I, and also, again, this is just all rubbing off of Coach Miller. He he likes this position, this basketball. And no matter how tall or short you are, if you know how to pass, dribble, and shoot, then he's gonna just put you out there on the court. Interesting. Um, so that's kind of uh, the basketball mind that I've developed. So. Okay. So I have this question to ask you. So. When it comes to positionless basketball, was there anybody in the NBA who you tried to emulate your game with? Um, somebody that's in playing right now is probably Siakam, just because he has some of the same dimensions I have, um, and a lot of his game is just off pure effort. He just out hustles people, yeah, and that's just something that I, I like to do also. And uh, yeah, so definitely, I, I definitely keep a close eye on Siakam. Um, and then there's other things I'll take a bit to piece from other people, but as as someone relevant right now, it's probably Pascal Siakam. Siakam yeah. Well, then you're going to be in the lead then if you're going to be <laughs> like Siakam, for real. Yeah, Siakam, my guy. So, um, He's real humble, too. I, lo I yeah. like that about him. And he started playing basketball, I think, when he was, like, what, 16? Right? Yeah, yeah, started at a really, really late age. So late bloomer, like late, yourself. Late bloomer, man. I shout can see to, that. Shout out to the late bloomers. Hey, for real, man. Same here. I'm a late bloomer <laughs> yeah. myself. So, um, when UNCG, when, when y'all went to the NCAA tournament in 2017, what was that experience like for you? Mind-blowing. I've heard so many, I've watched it, obviously, all my life. heard so many stories, man, about the tournament and how it was just so many, how it was so different from any other basketball experience. And just everything from the the private flights there and you know the hotel and just the media it was just a great experience i'll never forget it hopefully i get to get back there this year that's right um but no i really enjoyed it it's a it's the best part of basketball in my opinion best time of basketball march march madness yeah for real yeah. so my last question to you is mm -hmm. what would you tell a young person who had the goal of playing at a collegiate level what's the first thing you would tell them um, if you really wanted to play basketball, um, I would just say do it because you you truly want to do it and not because your parents are pushing you to uh, do it mm -hmm. because if you don't truly love basketball, it's going to eventually fade. It's going to, it's going to show and it's going to fade and it's, it's not going to be successful for you. Um, and that's where I'm just talking about my own personal experiences. Yeah. Um, as I got to understand the game, I came to UCG, mm -hmm. I grew this love for the game. So no matter any type of adversity that I went through, just me having that love for the game was able to keep me grounded and able to keep me pushed through anything that, any challenges that I had. The passion inside. Yes. That's what matters, man. Yeah. Thank you, James, for talking with us for a few minutes. It will. Appreciate you, man. Have a good one, man. <coughs> Yo, that was dope, man. I appreciate yeah. it, man. Nah, for sure. It was cool. Yeah, man. I like that. Pascal Siakam. I see that.